No time like the present to clear up some misconceptions that creationists have when it comes to evolution and the origin of life. So apparently there's this one idea that's been thrown around a lot, that life came from rocks. Yes, not figuratively, but literally rocks. And creationists seem to misunderstand it, which is why I thought it'd be a great idea to clear the room of misconceptions today. Alright, let's roll the clip. Let's see what these atheists have to say about the origin of the first single-celled organisms. Despite everybody correcting him, he still says that, well, you believe, you know, evolutionists believe we came from a rock. Except that no evolutionist ever believed that. No, yeah. not one, not ever. Okay, so it's not just Aaron Ra that has to deal with this, but a handful of other atheists who've live debated creationists, as we'll see later. Essentially, when creationists argue, they like to kind of exaggerate or strawman what atheists are saying, obviously to make our position seem much more ridiculous. I mean, it's a common fallacy in debates that pretty much everyone has done at some point in their lives, but there's a limit to it. You shouldn't be exaggerating to the point where you would create a straw man, and that's pretty much what happens here. Now, Matt is going to argue that it's not a straw man, so let's take a look. This scientific paper says uh, here that you can see, it says life and rocks may have co-evolved on Earth. Wow, you're really calling this a, quote, scientific paper? I guess that goes to show that you don't really know what a scientific paper is, because this is a secondary article. Now, that doesn't mean secondary articles are always unreliable, but a lot can be, which is why I always recommend reading the primary source. You know, the actual scientific paper that this article is referencing. Anyway, moving on. And it goes on to say that rocks beget life. Right there. Okay, let me make this clear. First of all, we have a lot of great ideas on how life came about. Many of the chemical reactions for essential components of life, such as proteins, bilayers, genetic material, have quite good roadmaps already. But this is a complicated topic that requires complicated solutions, so obviously not everything is mapped out yet. As a result, we have what we call theoretical biologists that research into things like abiogenesis to discover more about life as we know today. And we've had many different ideas, such as the potential that life could come from Mars or from deep space, so now we have some ideas that life could have came about through the the utilization of minerals found within rocks, as this article says. Now, Matt doesn't read the whole article and leaves out some important points, so why don't we do that for him, shall we? Moral Wizard was essentially asking whether the mineralogy that existed when Earth was new, and possibly when life originated, was different from what we see today. No mineralogist in history has ever asked a question like that, says Hazen. While a mineral forming process should be the same whether it occurred billions of years ago or last Tuesday, Hazen realized that there is no reason to assume that minerals couldn't evolve, just as life changes over time. He and his colleagues have since shown that life didn't spring up in isolation. Minerals likely helped it along the way, and as life evolved, it created a myriad of chemical niches that allowed new minerals to form. The mineral surfaces protect, organize, and template. They take those molecules and select and concentrate them. They help those molecules react to form longer and longer structures like cell membranes and polymers. We know that molecules simply cannot organize that way in the ocean or atmosphere. They're much too dilute, they're much too random. It was surfaces, like minerals, that provided both the energy and concentration mechanisms that's needed to bring molecules together in the key steps for life or origin. So as you can tell from the article, the main focus was on minerals, how they were potentially different during early earth and that they potentially played a role in helping other molecules organize and create longer structures by providing energy and concentration mechanisms. In other words, minerals help create life, not become the life itself. The saying where Matt skips to says, life begets rock, rock begets life, is just a fancy way of describing it, to exaggerate it so it sounds cool, because saying that minerals begets life doesn't sound nearly as fancy. They're just saying rocks, even though it's not really rocks, but rather minerals. But at the end of the day, even just reading the title, Life and Rocks May Have Co-Evolved on Earth, you can already tell that they're not saying that life literally came from rocks, or even minerals for that matter. Instead, they potentially co-evolved, where minerals of early Earth played a huge organizational role in putting the actual components of life together. So, when, when people get online and they say, nobody believes that life descended from rocks, it shows that this, this guy hasn't done the most basic of research, you know? Uh, he needs to definitely go look at some scientific articles and papers. Uh, actually, it's you who needs to finish reading an article before making a straw man. And instead resort to your typical misrepresentations of science, like claiming I think life came from a rock, no matter how many times I explain to you that those are stupid things to say. <laughs> I love how he admits that it's a stupid thing to say that life descended from a rock. They're admitting that if somebody actually believes that, that it's a crazy belief system. And here's the thing, they, they actually believe that, whether they realize it or not. And I'm actually gonna show you the scientific papers. We'll just go through uh, just a few of them and show you that this is what they believe. They may not understand the fundamentals of their faith, 
Very nice. A creationist who has no training in science or biology is going to tell us what the science is. Wonderful. I just can't wait. So it's a bold-faced lie for these uh, atheist YouTubers out there to get online and say, well, nobody believes that life came from a rock. That's a creationist straw man. You know, and they'll accuse us of lying. Well, they themselves are lying just by saying that because it is basic knowledge on the origin of life research. Here's another paper, uh, Genesis, Rocks, Minerals, and the Geochemical Origin of Life. So again, this is a paper on the origin of life. You can see it right there. Um, if you read on in this paper, it says, researchers on the origin of life now conclude that rocks and minerals must have played key roles in virtually every phase of life's emergence. This is absolutely ridiculous. Not only did you not read the rest of the paper, it seems you also didn't read the rest of that one short abstract. Literally, the next sentence says, they catalyzed the synthesis of key biomolecules. They selected, protected, and concentrated those molecules. They jump-started the metabolism, and they may even have acted as life's first genetic system. So once again, this paper is saying that rocks and minerals helped catalyze the actual biomolecules to form life, but they don't become life itself. When creationists are claiming life came from rocks, that's saying that the rocks literally became life itself, which is absolutely false. I agree with the atheist YouTubers in your video. No one believes that life came from rocks. But rather, there's a good reason to believe that minerals and rocks played a key part in assisting essential biomolecules to become the first forms of life. But they themselves don't become the life. That's a massive difference. If I baked a cake in the kitchen, did the cake come from me? Did I become the cake? Absolutely not. The cake is a mixture of flour, eggs, sugar, and whatever other food ingredients used. But the quote helper in this case that put the cake together, me, is not the cake itself. The theory is that rocks were rained on and minerals were eroded from those rocks. And then we came into existence based on those minerals getting eroded and rearranging themselves into elements that would make it so that life could come into existence. That is the fundamental of their faith. It's the fundamental of the origin of life from an atheistic perspective. Look, even if we use some twisted logic and somehow read these articles as saying life literally came from rocks, it still isn't a fundamental belief system of biologists. Sure, it's a very popular idea, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily accepted as the 100% truth as to what happened and therefore isn't a fundamental part of evolutionary beliefs. That's the thing about science. We have many hypotheses floating around, all have good research dedicated to them, but as we learn more, we are able to narrow more of it down. And abiogenesis is just a topic we don't fully understand every corner just yet, so there is no quote fundamental belief here. And the fact that they admit that it is so stupid to believe that life came from rock, nobody believes that. To me, they're admitting that their own belief system is crazy. Welp, as it turns out, you're just creating a bigger and bigger straw man. Funny how it always turns out this way. So this is what they are saying. I mean, you've got another paper that is titled, You Owe Your Life to Rock. So it says here that erosion of metal-rich granite long ago set the stage for multicellular organisms. How interesting. I love the way that this one starts out. It starts out by saying, thank goodness for granite. Bruh. These scientists are saying, don't thank God for life. Thank your granite grandfather rock. Because if it wasn't for him, this unconscious rock that was rained on and had minerals come out of it, then we wouldn't have even come into existence we wouldn't have even been conceived. Okay, now you're just salty about a joke that the article made for its first sentence to grab the attention of the reader. Oh, and it seems that you've once again misinterpreted the title of the article. It said, you owe your life to rock, but that could mean anything, such as, for example, that rocks help catalyze the essential biochemicals into life today. But of course, we'll never know unless we go in to read the article. Yeah, it's just so interesting to me that that's how this paper starts out. Thank goodness for granted. I mean, it just makes you laugh when you look at this, because it's mind-blowing that anyone could possibly buy into it. Oh, that's it? That's all you're reading from the article? Well, good thing we're here to expose you for your nonsense. For much of its history, life on Earth existed as only single-celled organisms. Certain proteins critical for multicellular life and presumed to have been equally critical for its evolution from single-celled ancestors require heavy metal elements, especially copper, zinc, and molybdenum. That's absolutely true. Metal ions play a huge role in the functionality of proteins and enzymes which allow them to speed up chemical reactions as catalysts. So it's definitely not a stretch to think that early organisms began adopting this into their own protein structures as well. Large amounts of sulfate materials, particularly ones 
that formed as a result of evaporation of mineral-rich waters in arid environments began appearing around 1.7 billion years ago, a sign that mineral sulfides found in the ore-rich rocks deposits were eroding, thereby releasing metals. Single-celled organisms incorporated these trace metals into metal-binding proteins that ultimately enabled the diversification of multicellular life, the researchers speculate online this month in geology. Would you look at that? The article seems to agree with this idea. Single-celled organisms likely use these metals provided to them from granite erosions into their protein structures. And these metals are a variety of metals, which by the way came from the granite erosions. So the granite itself didn't actually become the protein catalysts, but rather the erosion of granite released other materials and metals which then became the catalysts for proteins. And on top of all of that, the icing on the cake is that this article doesn't even talk about the origin of life or how life came about on Earth. But rather, it's talking about early life, single-celled organisms that managed to use these metals in order to further walk down the path of evolution. So not only have you completely misinterpreted the article, but also the article wasn't even talking about anything relevant to how life came about. This is one of the grossest misinterpretations of published sources I've ever seen in my life. What a disgrace. Thanks for watching, and thank you to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, and Rick Klen for their generous support on Patreon. Bye.